Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to a video for some assemblage required combined with the Series 11 Christie's Beautiful Life 30 Days of Sketches. And the sketch we are using today is from Dana Terry, created with uh, Dana, created by Dana Terry with designs by Dana. Um, I took a lot of inspiration from the sketch, but I didn't follow it quite exactly. My photos are similarly oriented, uh, only kind of upside down. Um, like if you took the whole spe sketch and flipped it uh, vertically. And I'm um, using that ampersand and the um, postage stamp as inspiration. And instead of making my postage stamp small, I used it as a frame for my entire layout. Um, cut. I had a friend with a Cricut at the retreat we were at. And I asked her to cut that for me, or actually I asked her if I could use her machine and I cut it. And then um, another friend had this ampersand in her uh, her Cricut library and I had her cut that for me. So I don't have a Cricut, I have a Silhouette machine and I didn't have it with me. So it's always good to have friends with machines at crops, especially when you don't bring yours. Anyway. Um, I'm going to go ahead and back it with that blue paper because I've got a lot of blue in my photos. The sky in the top photo, which is actually not a photo, um, is uh, that same shade of blue. And then it there's little flowers on here that has the darker blue that mimics the roller coaster car that we are sitting in. And the piece that says Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk and Giant Dipper are part of one of those cardboard folders that the photo comes in when you buy a photo that is taken on a roller coaster. And that is the photo that was actually taken on the roller coaster. Um, I just disassembled the piece that, uh, or the folder to create my title. And then the red frame here, I am just die cutting those with my um, alpha dies. I'm, I'll put the link to the alpha dies alphabet dies down below for you in case you're interested in those. Um, but the red was really hard to match. It's kind of a, almost a little bit orangey and the gloss on it kind of gave it a different look too. So I decided to die cut them out of the same folder that the piece that says giant dipper is cut out of so that it matches exactly. And my title is going to end up reading Santa Cruz beach boardwalk, giant dipper and scream. Uh, the, the story I'm telling is about the scream not really about the giant dipper, although that was the first big roller coaster that my son went on in the photo. He's probably about nine or 10 years old. And um, I don't have the date in front of me, so I can't swear to that. Uh, but he's, you know, right around that age. And I, I had told him that when you get to the top of the roller coaster, and it starts to go down, it's um, a lot easier if you scream rather than if you try and hold your breath. And so I expected a really high pitched uh, scream and I got a really deep manly kind of a scream which was a little surprising um, and uh, and awesome so anyway um, that is all I am telling about this story and I'm using this awesome acrylic that is black uh, with white etching on it so the detail is amazing when you see the close-ups at the end uh, you'll see all of the awesome detail if you uh, stick around for that. And it's just incredible. MK's got some awesome acrylics in her shop this month. So go and check those out. I believe, if I remember correctly, these acrylics are from two different packs, um, the rides anyway. And uh, I end up using the roller coaster for sure because it's very similar to the roller coaster that we were riding on. If you've never seen the Giant Dipper, it's kind of, it's one of those old wooden roller coasters. It's actually, I think, historic. And um, I end up using the Ferris wheel. We did, there's no picture of a Ferris wheel uh, on this layout or anything, but I thought it went really well. I know I'm not going to use it anywhere else because uh, A, I don't ride Ferris wheels and B, I don't have any pictures of anybody in my family riding Ferris wheels. Ferris wheels are not our thing, apparently. Um, so I thought it would great, go great on this layout. It's not going to be, uh, you know, needed anywhere else. Um, but I do have other pictures of other roller coasters and other like carousels and stuff. So I can probably use those other ones on a different layout. So anyway, I, um, 
also really love the piece that is at the very bottom that says you must be this tall to ride and it's got one of those old-fashioned fingers pointing and so um i definitely wanted to use that because this is his first big roller coaster ride even though uh, he was plenty old enough to ride a roller coaster when he was younger. Neither of my kids are, are big on riding roller coasters or rides like that. Um, they are, they're both, I don't know, they, neither one of them have that much interest in it. So um, they definitely tried, tried it when they were younger and it wasn't a big thing to them. And uh, it's not that they won't go on them, they're just not... It's not something they feel like they need to do, I guess. I don't know. Okay, so the red letters there, I decided they needed to be backed in black. They uh, need that pop. And so I just put, used my ATG. I glued them down to some black paper, and I'm just fussy cutting around them. I thought that looked better than trying to distress ink them because, A, they're kind of like this weird glossy um a coating on them which is I mean all of those kind of little folders have that kind of feel to them and so getting the ink so that it didn't just wipe right off uh, was probably you know that it would have to sit there and dry or whatever but I really like the crispness crispness of using just the black paper so that is the main reason also it's really hard to get inside the R and the A um, and even the points of the the inside points of the M um, with an ink dauber. So this worked out really well and I really like the way that it looks. I did back my photo and uh, the title piece in white and in black just to give it a little extra pop. I thought that uh, was a nice nod to the acrylic that has the black and white on it. I thought I was going to do my journaling on this stamped piece that is from an Elizabeth Craft Designs stamp set called Note Pieces and um, the number for it's CS253 if you're interested in that, but I don't end up using it. I end up going with the t um, word strips and the reason is I, I just couldn't make it work where it didn't look awkward and have like that the yellow outline all the way around it and then it didn't give me a very big writing surface. I, I felt like I could get more writing into some word strips and cut them apart and fit them in. Um, this other little stamp that I am using is from Elizabeth Craft Designs. Also, it's their CS131 Circle Labels. And that one actually just says, we are having fun. Lots of it. And so I do use that. And then I went ahead and cut my word strips. I like to cut them ahead of time and then write on them. It does make them a little bit more difficult to write on. But uh, the reason I do that is because a lot of times if I just write on a piece of paper and then try and cut it apart. The A senders and D senders get cut off. My writing's not always perfectly straight. Um, and I think that's probably pretty common with most people. And so by doing this, I, it just allows me to go ahead and um, write it in the right uh, height that I need. And if I make a mistake, I just cut it and I start a new one because um, these all kind of get shuffled around and cut wherever they need to be cut. Now, I'm not gonna sit, make you sit through all of my writing, um, but I basically write the entire thing of what I just already told you, the entire story. And I really like the way that it looks. While I do a little bit of writing, don't forget to check out everyone who's playing around with 30 Days of Sketches. The playlist for that is down below where you can go and see all of the uh, videos that have been released to date. So I got a bunch of the writing down uh, wherever I made a mistake. Like I said, I just cut it and I just kind of finagle these around. If I have to cut them some more, it's okay. Um, somehow it always looks fine. It's not like all of the breaks are lined up evenly or anything like that. And uh, I, it works for me. So that's what I decided to go with. Now I do end up going back to the circle label stamps from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I'm going to end up stamping one more that... Um, says just the facts and it's going to go right over the head of the little boy that's in the photo in the bottom um, left hand corner because I don't want his head showing. I did use my liquid glue to adhere the word scream down and I am using some glue dots to adhere the acrylic pieces and I think they fit just perfectly. I'm really um, I'm really loving the way that they look uh, like I said, don't forget to check out the close-ups so you can get, see all of that detail. Um, I'm just using some archival ink from Ranger to stamp those 
uh, black stamps. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below. I would love a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe as well. If you uh, are interested in what dies I used for my title or any of the other pieces, including the acrylic, I will put links down below for you so you can find that really easily. I'll be back again tomorrow with another video and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.